staff. This is not partisan. When the Obama administration went after Fox News and they got brushed back, you cannot go after reporters this way and be president of the United States. We have freedom of the press well, and their first amendment. I, I, I just want to interrupt you for a second because there we go. Martin Luther King uh, III, MLK Jr.'s son, right. oldest son, and uh, Donald Trump, the president-elect, who just had a meeting. We're hoping to hear now from MLK III, who, by the way, over the weekend, as we're seeing uh, uh, Donald Trump go back, I believe, into the elevators there, the doors go. Uh, over the weekend, uh, he had an op-ed in The Washington Post where he talked about wanting voter ID, free voter ID for all. We assume that was part of the conversation that, that they had. Let's see if he's going to come over to the cameras and uh, make some comments. He seems to be just heading out. Looks like he's going to be heading out. Uh, but this is one way, I, I, we will say this, when people come and go, they have the opportunity, if they want to, sure. to, to talk to the press. Having said that, this is something that obviously is of great concern to the White House press corps. But are we navel-gazing, those of us who have worked over there in 60, at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, do the American people care about this? Um, I think, yes, the press is navel-gazing, and yes, it's incredibly important. Both of those things are true at the same time. You need to have a press corps that's involved and close enough to the action to be able to follow it and hold the administration accountable. All right. Well, thank you both. Uh, do we are, are are we actually hearing now from MLK the third? Okay. All right. Well, thank you both, Bruce Jamal. Okay. Good thank to you. see Thanks both of you. Appreciate thank it. You. Yeah. Right. Live at Trump Tower, MLK the third. Let's listen. Conversation. We just had an extraordinarily constructive conversation about how to carry forth the legacy of Dr. King and most importantly, make it easier for everyone to vote. As Martin put forth in a Washington Post op-ed just yesterday, we're 138 out of 172 democracies when it comes to voter turnout, and President-elect Trump has committed to us to work with us to once and for all make it easier for all people to vote. You will read about the Trump card, which is in the Washington Post story, and as Martin will tell you, it is every president, from Carter to Clinton to Barack Obama, who said the system is broken, and this president may well have the unique opportunity to finally live true to the Voting Rights Act, and once again, make it easy for all Americans to vote. Let, let me briefly um, not just reiterate but state that we did have a very constructive meeting. Uh, the seminal right of the modern civil rights movement was the right to vote. And my father uh, fought so diligently for, and certainly Congressman John Lewis and many others, Jose Williams, uh, fought for as well. It is very clear that the system is not working at its maximum. And through an op-ed that you may have seen, we provided at least a solution to begin to address a broken voting system. Uh, that was the dialogue, most of the dialogue that we talked about constructively. We believe we provided a solution that at least will give everyone an idea. Mr. Sir, King, as you know, know Representative Lewis has, still has the scars from the march on Selma. Were you offended by the president-elect's tweet that Representative Lewis is all talk and no action? Well, first of all, I think that in the heat of emotion, a lot of things get said on both sides. And uh, I think that um, at some point, you know, I, I am, as John Lewis and many others are, a bridge builder. The goal is to bring America together and Americans. We, we are a great nation, but we must become a greater nation. And what my father represented, my mother represented through her life, what I hope that I'm trying to do is always bring people together. Sir, do you know many African Americans? Sir, many African Americans are very concerned about a Trump presidency. A woman came in here last week and told me he's going to have black people up against the wall, both literally and figuratively. Did he allay your concerns that he'll be a president for all people, black and white? Well, certainly he said that, that he is going to represent Americans. He said that over and over again. Uh, and I think that we will continue to evaluate that. I think that the nation supports, I believe that that's his intent. Uh, but I think also we have to consistently engage with pressure, public pressure. It doesn't happen automatically. My father and his team understood that, did that. Uh, and, and I think that Americans are prepared to do that. Sir, if I may follow up, isn't there something that just cuts to your core when you hear the president-elect refer to John Lewis as all talk and no action? 
I mean, nothing could be further from the truth. Isn't that right? John Lewis is not all talk and no action. No, absolutely, I would say John Lewis has demonstrated that he's action. As I said, things get said on both sides in the heat of emotion. And uh, at some point, this nation, we, we've got to move forward. We can't stay on. I mean, people are literally probably dying. We need to be talking about how do we feed people? How do we clothe people? How do we create the best education system? That's what we need to be focused on. On this day, what would your father's message be to President-elect Trump? What do you think your father's message would be to President-elect Trump? This is the final answer I'm going to have, because I'm going to reiterate what I just said. I think my father would be very concerned about the fact that there are 50 or 60 million people living in poverty, and somehow we've got to create the climate for all boats to be lifted. In America, with a multi-trillion dollar economy, $20 trillion almost, it's, it's insanity that we have poor people in this nation. That's unacceptable. And when we work together, we know we can roll up our sleeves. There's nothing that we as Americans can't do. Thank you very much. Martin Luther King III on uh, the day that remembers his father's life. No criticism for President-elect Trump, but clearly uh, wants to work with him on a voter ID initiative after a year uh, when many people would say across uh, 2016, where in many states the rights of people to vote were in fact restricted. And so he is part of an organization called Y2Tuesday.org. And you saw with him uh, a lawyer, William Wachtell, whose father uh, was an advisor and a friend of Martin Luther King Jr. They have been working and you saw him hold up that ID. That's exactly what they want people to be able to get for free, uh, an identification that allows more people to vote. And so he said the system is not working, it is broken, and he had what he called a very constructive meeting with President-elect Trump.